everybody, it's Norm from Testin. And Kate from Testin. We're here at Comic Con 2018 where Leica has brought, well, something truly amazing an yes. exhibit. Yes, Leica Live. Last year, they brought some of their puppets. Yes. And sent to Comic Con to share with the public. And this year, it's way bigger than that. Oh, yeah. That. It's a whole new ballgame now. It's amazing. They have behind us six scale full sets from movies like Coraline, Box Trolls, and behind that wall, they've even brought like part of their shop. Yeah, there's a full workshop. There are great people back there, animators and model makers, and we got to talk to a few of them. We're gonna chat with a model maker, chat with an animator, and learn a little bit about how they make their wonderful films. Let's go check it out. So I'm here now with Gabe, who is an animator at Leica, and Gabe, this looks like a set. Oh, it is a set, yeah. You guys have brought one of your sets from a past film. Yeah, this one, this is Kubo running away from the Moon Beast, and uh, I animated this set, and this was about a 30 foot long set. Wow. And they actually brought in a section of the real set, brought it here so we could recreate sort of a, you know, the green screen and everything, so we could show sort of the VFX process too. And, uh, so at like uh, when you're filming in the studio, these sets are like all being filmed at the same time. It's a laborious process. Oh yeah, yeah. How many sectioned off little sets areas are there? Uh, I mean, we'll have like fifty or sixty. Wow, and animators in each. Everyone is different environment, yeah. different shot for the film. Oh yeah. And that becomes like your domain. Yeah. And so I mean, we animate the shot on like a long set, and then at some point they'll just break it in half. Oh. And then they'll have they'll shoot that direction with the same shot sequence, and one animator will take the camera going that way, and I'll take one going the other way, wow. so that we can speed it up. But that's all blocked out ahead of time in terms of the shot you're going to do. Exactly. Like it's not like filming a traditional film where you want to get coverage this angle, that uh -oh. angle. It's all laid out. You have a master board of which shot you want. Yep. Awesome. Now for this particular shot, it's on a railing system. Is any of this computer controlled? No. And this would not. This isn't actually accurate to what we did for the shot. This is a simplified version because we, our camera rigs, you know, would have taken up half of that, you know, next set over there. So this actually, when you turn it, moves our camera and our puppet at the same time. Ah. So what this would represent is more what we would put up just for the character. Right. Right. And so this gives us our up and down and side to side, and you know this movement. So and then I can rotate for his hip movement and counteract. You know, so that's sort of what this is representing. And so it's almost like the external version of his armature, his internal armature, yeah. that you can then green screen out and post. And, and yep. Yeah, because we, you know, we have to deal with gravity mm -hmm. where other animation doesn't. So when he is midair, he can't just sit there, right? Like in right. a drawing, you know, we have to have a way of suspending him. In some shots, do you have them attached from underneath? Yeah. So we'll have these little threaded rods, mm. and we'll drill holes in the sets. And there's a little thread that comes up and we'll tie them down. Uh, and so as they're walking along, we'll drill a new hole, tie them down, drill a new hole, tie them down. And so we have a series of holes that we follow along. Is every character's gait unique? Oh yeah. And, and is every animator unique? So how yeah. do you maintain us a consistency? Well, like if you look behind you, like this is a shot I shot. And there's a reference that I shot of myself running mm -hmm. to represent. And so just by luck, it worked out that my runs matched what they wanted for Kubo. Oh. But for the next movie, in a different character, they didn't want my run. It yeah. was a bit too action-y, and they wanted someone to, you know, just a whole different look. So they went and got a different animator or a different person in the studio that mm -hmm. sort of matched that walk or that run. And then generally, that person gets targeted for the rest of the movie as the person you go to. Right, like, right. It becomes their yeah, thing. We need you to do this walk again. Or you know. And I believe like CG animators or even traditional hand yeah. animators use reference, like they film themselves often. Exactly. So you think of yourself in what the character would do. It's a little method yeah. that way. And it's new for us. We haven't been doing this. Like Coraline, we didn't do it. One or two animators did it on Paranorman. Oh. And then it's been growing to the point that everyone's doing it now for every shot. Wow. And it's really informing a lot more growth because they really want us to have a real naturalistic mm -hmm. approach to our animation. And it was hard getting to that without really having a fundamental base in like, you know, physicality of a real human. Well, not only is there the physicality of the body, there's also the facial expression. Yeah, exactly. So how do you approach that? Uh, well, there's a separate team of animators that do the facial and they do the same thing. They'll set up their iPhone, you know, or whatever, and just shoot themselves doing the lines and just watching it. It's not necessarily copying, it's watching how like the cheeks 
raise when you say a line or pull mm -hmm. back different muscle how the muscles work because they're trying to recreate that same essence right and then the you puppets. have a whole box of just facial shapes yeah that exactly. you pull from and when i get onto the set i don't really get to dictate what face i grab they've worked that all out in advance oh. so i go to my log sheet and i will look at it at a frame number and it will say oh access this frame and access this pose and it will say on the back of a pf003 ah oh, that's you know frame 25 that's the one i have to put on are these never repeated and it's every or is, is this have multiple purpose um we used to work off kits so there was a they build a kit of faces and that's how they did all the dialogue yeah we're getting away from that so that each shot is more individual oh so a lot of times once you're done with that shot it just that's it it doesn't have to get thrown away but it's not used again and that's so, one of the benefits of rapid prototyping and being able yeah. to have a good mold and cast team and a great, yeah. a huge model shot. Yeah. Wow. Well, and someone, you know, these come out color and they come out pretty smooth, but someone's got like a small little toothpick with sandpaper and they're sanding in all these creases to get that smoothness. And so, I mean, it's crazy, those people, there's a lot of work that goes into these faces, so. As I see from film to film, you, it seems like you guys are getting more ambitious. Yeah. In the last film, massive armatured characters, real, really huge, huge set pieces. Yeah. As an animator, what excites you about the next challenge of animators? Is it the smaller things or is it the bigger things, the more complex things? Hmm, that's a good question. Uh, I mean, I'm a, I like to do action stuff, so for me it's always a, a new way to approach an action sequence, whether it's faster cutting or a bigger set piece mm -hmm. or characters being more physical you know, like running or fighting or doing something that we haven't, I guess it's just doing it in a new way that we haven't done it before. And that's a hard thing to come by because, I mean, it's almost like getting new ideas to come in from different places. And they do, they'll go hire like a fight coordinator or something to bring in a new uh, view on a fight. And that, that is exciting, you know. That's yeah. very cool. And we'll see all of that work on screen with your next film, Missing Link. That's right. Awesome. Thank you so yeah, much, yeah. Ken. It's a pleasure to chat with you. Yeah. Hi, Kit. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Yeah. So, you work at Leica. I do. And uh, welcome to my little puppet workshop that I've created here at San Diego Comic Con. This is fantastic. So, Thanks. tell me a little bit about what you do at Leica. Well, I, I initially started at uh, Leica as an amateurist, yes. which means I build the, the bones and the skeleton of the character. Very cool. So, do you want me to give you some examples? Yeah, that would be great. Over here, uh -huh. this is exactly the skeleton that's inside our paranormal guy. So, this is his skeleton. When we know the size and shape of the character, mm -hmm. you, all, you know all this, because I know you make puppets as well. So. Oh, I've done a few. Uh, so, but um, he's a really cool guy to look at. So this guy, now we, we've created the skeleton, mm -hmm. he can actually like hold his position where the animator wants him to move to. So we can really do some fun things and uh, put him on nice. his tiptoes. Do you want to play around with it, Kate? Sure. I but love, you, you've now. Built, you've built armatures before though, have you, Kate? I have, but I'm not as skilled in the machining side of things. Right. Uh, so I'm in huge awe of just how great of a movement and how well it sticks. And you, have, you don't have to be as worried about wearing out the joints on something like well, this, Well, I yeah? mean, like, at Leica, we are quite lucky as armatrists to be yes. able to uh, pick and choose. Depending on the size of our character, we can pick and choose from all of these different uh, ball and socket joints. Uh, we have different sizes. Let me show you a little example. Sure. All these like different size joints, we uh, design at Leica on a computer program. Mm -hmm. And then we've actually got the CNC machines that are going to machine all these parts out. Lovely. And, you know, drill our balls and, and create these lovely joints. So I am quite quite lucky to uh, be able to... Yeah, this is definitely a lot of people's dreams to be able to work with something this quality. Exactly. And uh, you are a model maker as well. Can you tell me anything about what kind um, of projects you've been working on? So I came to work for like uh, seven years ago. Yeah. So I, was, uh, I got the call, would I like to come to Portland, Oregon to make zombies? <laughs> so I said yes and I Pack got my myself bags. a flight and packed myself Oh my bag. God. Yeah, and here I am. So. I didn't realize I'd be working for them quite so long, but I'm still here. Nice. Uh, which is nice. So I've, I've done uh, Paranorman, um, 
I've done the box trolls of Kubo and we've just finished the, the next one which is Missing Link. Once we've created these characters, so I'll, you know, I'll, I'll help out in the armature department, mm -hmm. but then we've created a, a sub-department of the actual uh, fabrication department, which is the puppet hospital. So you see, you see the sign over there. Yes. Um, so, but, so now we've got like a team of people that all do like different skills. It's quite loud in here, so hopefully you can still hear me. Yes. Um, but we've got different skills and we've been cross-training each other so I'm learning a lot more about like creating the hair. I've been, te I've been teaching Austin how to actually like fix and repair the armatures. Nice. Because uh, I kind of specialise in that. He's more of a hair specialist. Sure. But we're, we're working together in, in, a, in a room like this where when the animators break the puppets, which happens all the time, I'm oh, sure you it know, does. It does. things fall off, things break, <laughs> you know, we get a loose elbow that we've got to tighten and stuff like that. So they can bring their puppet here to the puppet hospital and we can fix it up for them, Kate. Lovely. Yeah. That's so fantastic. It's pretty it, cool, isn't it? it? It's really great that you get to work with things of such quality and yeah. I'm sure with the team that you've amassed of really great yeah, people exactly. as well. Yeah, exactly. I mean, it is like a real uh, collaboration of different people, like the different departments that we've got here, like the hair and the pin, um, we've got the you know the armature, we've got casting and molding, so over here I've got a, a mold, oh, I've, been, I've been working on this, awesome. this guy over here, so I'm, I'm, I'm actually like, I've still got to put the uh, the balls, and solder the balls onto yeah. the arm so we can attach the wrists onto this guy, uh, and that can go into the mold, and we've, we've made these molds of the different body parts, and yeah. we, we bring all those body parts together, and then we can actually like, you know, send that send that body to the costume department, the hair department, yep. uh, the, the paint department and uh, and then eventually we get our, our finished puppet and you'll, you'll see a lot of the uh, puppets uh, Definitely. As, as you look around the windows. So. This is all so beautiful. Thank you so much for taking time and talking with me and showing me a little bit about what you do. It's Obviously I'm a big fan. Uh, well, <laughs> and it's really nice to just meet a fellow model maker because I know you do a lot about it and you, and you also uh, know people from the industry that I've, I've worked with for years. Definitely, so it's, it's a small world. Guys. Yeah. All right. Cool. Thank you. You're welcome. on stop motion films, you've worked in shops before, how does something like this rank? This is amazing, it's sort of my dream, it's a mobile workshop where this is exactly what it feels like and you get a glimpse into the life of what it is to do these things behind the scenes. And we hear about Leica using things like 3D printing, but there's so much of it here that's still traditional processes. Oh definitely, and just ways of taking the old style and the new technologies and blending them together and that's, that's what really interests me. And I know back there they have a set from their upcoming from Missing Link, so yes. I'm gonna check that out. But thank you all for watching. We have more stuff from Comic Con 2018, and we'll see you next time.